let's get rid of some magic here that you hear about from a lot of different folks. Oh, I designed this circuit, blah, 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 blah. This is the basic amp. We put a microphone signal in here. We get speakers out over here. This is a 5 to 10 watt. Basically, if you own a 5 to 10 watt practice amp with a, with a couple EL84s in a push-pull design like this, this is what you need to know in order to repair it. So what we have on this circuit is for a basic PA, the first uh, preamp stage, the mic goes through a capacitor, 0.02 mu f, to the grid. A signal goes in and comes into the grid, it controls what's coming out on the plate. This is a 0.006 mu f. Why? Because this is very clean. A 0.02 fattens it up for us, especially if we're playing blues. A lot of folks ask about this one meg. After the capacitor from the mic coming in, we put a one meg resistor in there to go to ground. That's important because this circuit, and a lot of circuits like this, are what ham radio operators use to transmit with. They, they trade out the transformer for the uh, speakers and they put an antenna over here. Basically short and sweet, that's what it's all about. But, because we're working with tubes, AM signals, audio modulated signals, the AM says, um, stations out there, so if you don't want to pick them up and hear them on this circuit, this mic cord acts as an antenna. And the antenna brings it right in here, so if you're playing and you don't mind blending in, you know, some <clears throat> radio talk station, then what this one meg does is effectively ground this out until there's a, it's kind of like a gate, if you will. The very weak AM signals that may be coming in will be, there's a gate threshold, and since it will it'll ground it out so you don't hear them, so there has to be a, a positive signal coming in on this mic to override the gate before this first part of this tube starts doing its thing, preamping. From there, there's a blocking capacitor. This, again, no currents going through. Gain adjust. The plate goes to the grid of the next stage. This is the next stage. And then a lot of folks at this point, you'll see it on a Fender, Marshall, Box, whatever. They'll put a tone stack in here. They'll put a volume control here. They fin it, feed it to the phase inverter. In which case, this is again another 12AX7. This is a push-pull. And the reason for that is you only get five watts of whack in this design, and that's full time use. But the reason for an AB class amplifier, which is this is, is as the signal goes rises on this section of the tube, this is turned on. As and then when it goes negative, it turns off. And then this turns on, it turns on the next tube. Which means, really, if you have a tube rated for 5 watts, you can get 3 to 6 times more power out of that because they're off half the time. Rule of thumb, 3 to 6 times the voltage, uh, the, the amp rating. So, if you want a, a 30 amp amplifier, buy a pair of 10s and you can get at least 30 amp, and depending how you configure it, you might even get 60 out of that. Now what we need here, what we're going to do for our tube screamer is basically utilize this section and maximize it, optimize it for what we need to do. Again, this here, this resistor and capacitor, just brings this cathode above ground potential. This is ground. Basic schematic reading 101. Where you see a dot, that means this wire and that wire are soldered together. Where you see a cross, no dot, that means 
We have to draw it on paper somehow, but that means they are not connected. Connected, connected, and we're, we're not going to use this or this section. We're just going to stay right here with this section here. Now then, you can get fancy transformers. In this case, for this circuit, 520 uh, volt center tap, which means we're probably talking 1,000 volts. So between here, center tap, and here, we're probably looking at 520, but between here is 1,000 volts. We're not going to do that. You can get multi-purpose transformers like this where you have your B plus coming out and you have your filament drive coming out. I've elected not to do that. I'm going to do something very different for you. This is very expensive to purchase and you don't have a lot of money. So we want to do a project that's probably in the $80 range. So we're not going to do this.